All right, everybody, thanks for checking out Uncensored Tactical today. We're doing another edition of the Tactical Book Club. Today's book is going to be <clears throat> it's going to be Rise of the Warrior Cup by Radley Balco. And I've seen a couple of interviews from him, and uh, I've read a little bit of his work besides the book. But I've owned this book for a long time. <clears throat> I've read it several times. And hopefully, if you see this video or you read my article on my website, about a review of this before you read it. Hopefully that'll help you enjoy it a little more. Uh, so let's jump right in. At the beginning of every book review I do for you guys, right up front, I like to tell you what I liked about it and what I didn't. <laughs> so right off the top of my head, let's start at the beginning. I don't think a book about law enforcement could have started any better than this. Are cops constitutional? Oh my God, let's talk about the beginning of every law enforcement career. So <laughs> the first thing you do in public service and law enforcement, or whether you're a politician or in the military, you raise that right hand and you go, yeah, I super duper swear, I promise that me, I say, state my name, I'm gonna follow the constitution. And even in law enforcement in your state, a lot of people don't know this either. You promise to protect and defend the constitution of the United States. And if you're local law enforcement, you also solemnly swear to protect and defend or defend and uphold. I, I forget the quote, but I know it's really similar. Uh, and I know it's not to protect and defend the president. It's to protect and defend or defend and uphold the constitution of your state as well. So you have a federal one and a state one. And I've taken both a number of times. Um, but it's funny that you would do that. And a lot of people have never seen or read the constitution and haven't seen or read it in a long time and then they forget about it for the rest of their career. So there's some really good talk right up front with page one, which I think is awesome. <clears throat> so off the top of my head, the book starts great. At least it shows me that the author, while a lot of times people refer to him as anti-law enforcement, I don't think he is. I think he's probably much the same way I am, which is it's a broken system. There's some really good people. There's a few really bad people that deserve to be in prison that are cops, but <clears throat> I, th I think you probably were probably kindred spirits. I'd really like to meet him someday. All right, so in my book, this is page 11, um, but it's an ebook, so it might be different. Uh, he st starts by talking, uh, okay, more than 100 times per day, SWAT teams violently smash into private homes uh, to enforce laws against cons consensual crimes. This is big. Uh, let me point a couple things out here because you're going to have to keep this prejudice and this viewpoint and the slant. You're going to have to let a lot of that go to really enjoy the book. So um, I've noticed that there's no reference here. There's no um, case study. There's no research that he shows you. Later in the book, he does show you a little bit. Um, but this is easy to say 100 times per day. And you can see the slant. They violently smash into private homes. Okay, he wasn't there on every one of those. Some of those might be a forced entry where no one's inside the home. So was it really violent and smash? Well sometimes the doors open so you wouldn't technically smash your way in um, and then we'll let that go for now so that's just an example of the slant that you'll see here and then consensual crimes uh, that's really important because guess what America the marijuana issue is coming I don't know and if the, for those of you that think it isn't I would like to point you to a small period in American history hmm, speaking of alcohol called the bro prohibition Everyone said, alcohol's bad, and you're bad if you do it. And everyone was drinking, and they said, well, we made a mistake. So this is coming too with marijuana, so I don't know why we have a big push in law enforcement to deal with that crap. I personally deal with it very little. I choose to deal with it very little. Okay, moving on, just to get another little taste here. You can see I freaking dug into this book. Okay, he says it's not an anti-law enforcement book, it's an anti-politician book. He's lying to you a little bit there, so take that slant and push it to the side. He says it's not anti-law enforcement, but even if it is anti-politician or anti-politics, he's using law enforcement in this book as a tool to make them look very negative. And maybe the purpose is to be an anti-politician book, but he's got a slant. And don't forget, too, the people that buy his books, his audience is people that are upset with law enforcement, people that are sick of law enforcement, people that hate law enforcement. He does a really good job at, for the most part, he doesn't stay perfectly on the fence. He's, he definitely slants toward anti-law enforcement, but he does give a ton of really good info to the opposite side. Um, 
and this part in blue, I want to share a little personal issue with you here. The good ones will never enter the field in the first place, or they will become frustrated and leave police work, or they'll simply turn bad. At best, at best they'll have unrewarding, unfulfilling jobs. I felt this way before I left the military. I actually just very, very recently left the military after 10 plus years. I felt this way in the military the first time I left active duty, and I said, never again. And I said, I'm really good at my job. I'm really smart. I'm not lazy. Uh, I know a lot of people in my job are lazy. They don't know anything about the Constitution. They're not going to stick to their oath. So I said, screw it. I'm out. And then I read this quote when I bought the book uh, God, a couple of years ago. I don't, I don't remember this, when this was released, but I got it when it was pretty new. Um, and I thought to myself, oh my God, I'm going to spend 20 or 30 or 40 years of my life in law enforcement. And at the end, I'm going to be like, ugh. So I did not want to waste my life. So this was a big turning point for me. I, I feel very similar to that statement. Um, I don't know what he means about turning bad. Maybe he means turning complacent, but you, you don't just de facto turn bad because you're a cop. So there's the slant again, but if you're reading the book, please try and, and just let that wash right off your back. Um, ton of history in this book. I'll give you a quick bonus. I'll not give you the whole thing, but I'll, I'll let you in on a bonus secret. If you've ever wonder, wondered about the history of law enforcement, and uh, I'm going to give you two little gems that he releases here. One is where the term sheriff comes from, which is really cool. And if you are a sheriff and you don't know that term, I'm wondering if you even thought to yourself, hey, why are we called sheriffs? Because that nice little avenue is, well, where do we, where does this job come from? Were there always police? Were there always sheriffs? What's the difference between police and sheriff? So you'll learn where the actual term sheriff comes from and how that came about, which is it's a short story, but man, is it really cool. I love when people bring history alive like that, and Radley does it here. Um, the other thing is they'll give you, if you ever wonder why we are the thin blue line, and some people make shit up as they go and they say, oh, blue because of the color of boldness, that's all bullshit. Um, there's, there's a real history story. Oh, excuse me. Ugh. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. Uh, there's a real history story about why they chose blue, and that's actually happened great back in Great Britain when they were standing up their police force, which they say is one of the first, and they say in ancient Rome there was too, but in mo recent history in Britain, they say they stood up the first modern police force, um, and they chose the color of their uniform for a reason, so that's in here too. So let me speed things along here. Uh, that button, that's what we want. The reform. I am, I like to read a little bit from all the books that I give you. So, lot of slant all the way through to the end of the book. Um, che, I don't know if I'm saying that right, Che Calvo only intended to be home long enough to grab a bite to eat and walk his dogs. Okay, so they start to personalize it towards the quote unquote, quote unquote victim. And I'm not saying he's not a victim, but he just, when you start to emotionalize things and build this story, you build it towards one person only, and then that ostracizes the other person. So there's no personal stories about the cops working late at night and missing their families and being stressed and nervous and having been worked too hard and paid too little. That's not in here. It's all about the victim and his family, which is fine. He has the right to do it. I understand the audience. I understand the story. And if this guy truly is a victim, then that freaking sucks. But he's out walking his dogs. Uh, it's him and his wife. And let's see, I think his wife's mother was in the house. So he takes his dogs out. He sees some SUVs in the neighborhood. And he's like, oh, that's weird. So the next thing Cobble remembers is the sound of his mother-in-law screaming. He ran to the window and saw heavily armed men clad in black rushing his front door. Next came the explosion. He later learned that this was the police blowing up his front door. Then there was gunfire, then boots stomping on the floor, then more gunfire. And he was in his boxers and screamed, I'm upstairs, please don't shoot. Okay, so turns out this, the SWAT team, I guess, hits the wrong house. And this guy's the mayor of the city that he works in. Well, I don't give a shit who you are. You're a civilian, so you don't have to paint a pretty picture to make this person more of a victim. Just give me the facts. That'd be great. And if you're going to give me stories about the people involved, give me stories about more of the people involved on both sides of the fence. But whoosah, there's a ton of great info in this book. Let that shit pass you by. Um, so that's, that's part of the story here. Um, I just recently reread this, so this part's fresh in my mind. You gotta let some of that go to enjoy this book. There is a slant. He does have a specific audience. He does write books. I'm sure he enjoys what he does. I would hope so. 
uh, but he also, I'm sure, enjoys making money, so he sells to his audience. Um, I've heard a couple audio interviews from him. I really like what he has to say, but I don't agree with 100% of what he does or how he does it. But if you want a really good look of, I mean, where are you going with law enforcement? Uh, where is law enforcement in general going? Where are things... Where are things headed? Well, if you're ever asking yourself that question, it's probably a good idea to know where you've been. I think there's an old nursery rhyme about that. Um, hopefully this helps you out. I think if you have a deep interest in law enforcement, whether you like them or don't like them, I would, I would say this is a little edgy, but I would definitely put it in the yes column. If you're in law enforcement, I, I'm actually trying to get a list together of my own personal books that I've read that I think are mandatory for law enforcement. This would be one of them for sure. Because it's a little bit anti-law enforcement, because there's a lot of complaints and there's a lot of slant, but it also does a great damn job of giving you the history, not to mention the constitutional part where it starts out. So that would be a nice reminder for people to take the oath to go ahead and remember what that oath entails and what the constitution entails. And there's some good case law um, and just a ton of history and some little nuggets. I love those little information nuggets. This was not dry. This is a very easy book to read. I highly recommend it. Thanks so much for checking out Uncensored Tactical. If you want some of our older books, go ahead and check out our YouTube channel. Um, and if you want some of our newer books that we're about to do, go ahead and click subscribe. I thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.